Welcome back. All right, so currently there's only one matchup known in the playoffs where both teams have played all 82 games. That's what I need as a requirement in order to uh, do a preview video, and here we are, previewing the first of the eight series that I will take a look at in the playoffs, the first round and all. The New York Rangers, definitely the Goliath in this situation, and the Capitals, probably the ultimate of the Davids in the first round. Although there are definitely going to be a few, it does feel like the Caps are the team that there's a lot of squabbling about whether or not they should be here, whether or not they belong here. The reality is it's an 82-game schedule. It takes over six months. If you are above the playoff line at the end of an 82-game schedule that takes over six months, you belong there. So, um, and if you finish below the line after an 82-game schedule, you had opportunities, you had chances, and you just didn't get there. And there's always next year. So for the New York Rangers, we'll take a look at them first. Uh, the New York Rangers have had a bit of an up and down history recently when looking at the playoffs. So with the playoffs, I'm just going to look from 2020 until now. Uh, 2020, in the qualifying round, the Rangers lose against Carolina in three straight. And what's interesting is uh, that best of five series before that started, the Rangers had had a, a really strong grasp on how to play Carolina during the regular season. And there was a belief that, you know, Carolina might not want to play against the Rangers. But Carolina took care of the Rangers in three straight. Uh, 2021, that's where we had the, the stacked Eastern Division. The Rangers don't make the playoffs there. Uh, 2022, after an overhaul with management and huge changes made, the team ends up having a pretty good run. They went all the way to the conference final in 2022, where they lost in six games against Tampa. That was a close series. And so it looked like the Rangers were close. And then last year, nope. They lost in the first round against the Devils in seven games. Of course, the Devils aren't in the playoffs this year, and so it, it definitely looks like the Rangers lost to an upstart, had a really good year, but couldn't so it couldn't sustain it, whereas the Rangers, uh, they win the President's Trophy. Now, their last Stanley Cup, of course, was 1994. So their last Stanley Cup was much further back than the one for the Capitals. Uh, during that 1994 run, uh, the New York Rangers beat Washington in the second round. They also won the President's Trophy that year. Now, this year, they finished with 114 points. That is one more point than they had in 2014-2015, the last time they won the President's Trophy. When they won the President's Trophy in 2014-2015, they went all the way to the conference final. They lost in seven games against Tampa. So the, the, the President's Trophy has not been a major jinx for the New York Rangers. They haven't gone out in the first or second round with it in their last two times with it, so we'll see. Now, I want to talk about their, their top scorers. Obviously, Panarin's the top guy. 82 games, 49 goals, 71 assists, 120 points. Obviously, people would have wanted him to hit 50, but 49 still pretty good. Since the All-Star break, 33 games, 19 goals, 35 assists, 54 points. So Panarin's been very consistent throughout the season. He did not have a fantastic first round against New Jersey last year. He's got, he should have a chip on his shoulder. It should be interesting to see how he does against that suffocating defense that the Capitals play. Trocek, 82 games this year, 25 goals, 52 assists, 77 points. Since the All-Star break, point per game, 33 games, 10 goals, 21 assists, 33 points. Trocek's been very good. Chris Kreider, 82 games, 39 goals, so right on the verge of 40. 36 assists, 75 points. Just think if there was a $40 bonus, a $50 bonus, just how frustrating that would be for those players. But Kreider, since the All-Star break, 33 games, 16 goals, 14 assists, 30 points. So he stayed around a point per game, a goal every other game. Again, very consistent production. Uh, Adam Fox, quite the season for a player that isn't being mentioned for Norris. Ranger fans not going to be all that happy with that. But if they win a Stanley Cup, I think you'll be okay with it, right? So 77 games, or 72 games, I should say. 17 goals, 56 assists, 73 points. Since the All-Star break, he's been fantastic. 33 games, 9 goals, 27 assists, 36 points. Mika Zibanejad, uh, his goal scoring down a bit this year. 82 ga or 81 games, just 26 goals, 46 assists, 72 points. So he's still around a point per game, and this shows the scoring depth with the team. Since the All-Star break, 33 games, 11 goals, 15 assists, 26 points. Igor. Igor has really turned it around. So his overall numbers this season, 36-17-2, and 9-13 save percentage. Since the All-Star break, 17-5-1 with a 9-30 save percentage. So he's pretty good. Now, other players I wanted to mention here, just in passing. Uh, Lafreniere, 82 games, 28 goals, 20 and assists, 57 points. Doesn't look like a bust now. Uh, and Lafreniere has been fantastic over the last couple of months. 
Uh, Ryan Lindgren is always one to watch come playoff time because nobody takes the kind of punishment Ryan Lindgren does and stays in the game. Or he gets injured and you go, well, that's a shoulder. He's got to miss like at least a month. And then he misses like a game and he seems angry about it. So offensively, not not huge numbers, obviously. 76 games, three goals, 14 assists, 17 points. But he's always one to watch defensively. And Matt Rempe. What's Rempe going to do in the playoffs? How much time will he get? How many games will he play? He's played 17 games in the regular season. One goal, one assist, two points, and 71 penalty minutes. So Rempe on one side, you've got Wilson on the other. We may end up with a bit of a fight here and there, right? So going over to the Washington side of things. 40, 31, and 11, their overall record. So 91 points for them. Uh, 2020, in the first round, they lost against the Islanders in five games. Four games to one in that first round. They were in the round robin before that. Uh, 2021, in the first round, they lost against Boston. That was in five games as well. 2022, they lost in the first round to Florida. That took six games for Florida to knock them out. Uh, last year, of course, no playoffs, which was you know a mild shock last year, but it, it meant that the expectations this season dropped, and they exceeded the expectations this year. I have no idea what to expect from them in the playoffs. Now, their last Stanley Cup, of course, 2018, they did not play the Rangers during that run. Uh, during that run in 2018, they overcame that their their dragon that needed to be slayed, which was the Pittsburgh Penguins, and they slayed that dragon by making the playoffs this year as well. If not for Washington being in there, it's possible that Pittsburgh ended up would have ended up getting that spot. Now they won the President's Trophy in 2016 and 2017. The the players from that team, most of them are gone, obviously. Uh, Strom wouldn't have been with that team. He ends up leading them in scoring at the end of the season. 82 games, 27 goals, 40 assists, 67 points. Since the All-Star break, 35 games, 8 goals, 28 assists, 36 points. Dylan Strom's been very, very productive and consistent for the Caps. Ovechkin, well, early on we talked about how how his, his season wasn't going well, and then he goes overseas at the All-Star break, gets a little bit of a mental break, and it worked. So his overall number, 79 games, 31 goals, 34 assists, 65 points. Since the All-Star break, 35 games, 22 goals, 12 assists, 34 points. So I, I don't know, maybe maybe head over overseas right before the season starts and, and have a little vacation and you can hit 50 next year. But Ovechkin's been dangerous. Obviously for the Rangers, keying on him is really important because goal scoring is, is, is thin on the Washington Capitals. Uh, Carlson, 82 games, 10 goals, 42 assists, 52 points on the season. Since the All-Star break, 35 games, 7 goals, 17 assists, 24 points. For Tom Wilson, 74 games overall, 18 goals, 17 assists, 35 points. The suspension ends up costing him a chance at 20 goals. Uh, since the All-Star break, 28 games, 6 goals, 8 assists, 14 points. Connor McMichael had quite the season. And 80 games, 18 goals, 15 assists, 33 points. I don't think do justice to just how well he played. Since the All-Star break, 35 games, 11 goals, 7 assists, 18 points. I'm a big fan of McMichael. Uh, Lindgren, 25-16-7 uh, and seven overall, 9-11 save percentage. His numbers have actually been down since the All-Star break. 16-10-3 with a 9-08 save percentage. So, with all that being said, we go over here, and it's a little different with the players that I want to focus on who aren't necessarily top scorers for the team this year. TJ Oshie. So if you need a big goal in the playoffs, Oshie could be your guy. 52 games, 12 goals, 13 assists, 25 points. Health is always going to be the question mark with Oshie. Pacioretty, probably the same question with Pacioretty. In 47 games with the Caps this year, 4 goals, 19 assists, 23 points. They were going to move him at the deadline, and he didn't want to go. And he probably feels happy about sticking around because he's part of the reason they end up making it. Even though the goal scoring hasn't been there, I think Pacioretty's played well. Marashnichenko might be one to keep an eye on in this round too. 21, 21 games for the Caps, 2 goals, 4 assists, 6 points. I thought Marashnichenko played well. But when we look at the numbers, everything seems to favor the Rangers. So goal scoring, 278 goals for the Rangers, 216 for the Capitals. Again, if the Capitals are going to win this series, they're going to have to play that low event hockey, really quiet, low scoring, 2-1, 3-2 kind of games. Keeping in mind the Rangers can play that style as well. Goals against, that favors the Rangers too. They allow 226, whereas the Capitals allow 252. Power play percentage favors the Rangers, 26.4%, comparatively speaking with 20.6%. Penalty kill favors the Rangers as well, 84.5% to 79%. Now, Cavs fans are going to say, hey, that 20.9%, 
it's been a lot better lately. It has. So both of these teams are going to want to stay out of the box, but in terms of penalty killing, the Rangers have better penalty killing numbers than the Caps. So we'll see how the special teams battle goes in this series. Uh, hits, uh, the Rangers hit more than, than the Caps. Uh, 1,981 hits for the Rangers, 1,878 hits for the Capitals. Block shots, the Capitals have the lead there. Not a surprise. It's the style of hockey they play. 1,419 block shots for the Caps. 1,289 block shots for the Rangers. So neither of these teams are shy about blocking shots. Um, leading first in the game is very important to the Capitals. It's not as important to the Rangers. So when the Rangers lead first, they're 35-8-3 this year. When they trail first, they're 20-15-1. and On the Capitals side, leading first, 28-5-5. Five and, five. and if they trail first, 12-26-6. So, really, the Capitals are have to score first. If they can go into if they can go into Game One and at MSG, score first, get the get the the fans out of the game, and then just control the pace from there. That's where an upset could start. The Rangers need to get that first goal, and and just quiet down any hopes the Capitals have. Winning both at home goes a long way to that. Now. If it's a one goal game this year, the Rangers, 742 points percentage. Insane. Absolutely ridiculous. The Capitals, not too shabby there either. 606 points percentage. If it's a two goal game, both teams, 615 points percentage. But if there's a goal differential in the game of three or more, it favors the Rangers. Uh, 632 is the points percentage for the Rangers if there's a three or more goal difference. Uh, the Capitals, 333. So if it becomes a run and gun, back and forth, fast game, that's going to favor the Rangers, absolutely. Uh, and the channel vote says the Rangers have this one in the bag. The channel vote, 87% currently, saying the Rangers. I'm not going to shut the vote down or anything. Uh, we'll take a look at, at the voting and all that. But I would think the 13%, very likely to be Caps fans or people who just don't like the Rangers. There's going to be that. Uh, so we'll see how it all ends up. But let me know your thoughts. I think the key is the Caps want to stay out of the box and they want to dictate the play. Score first. And then just suffocate the play. The Rangers, play that on-tempo style. Get the Caps on their heels. Get that early lead. Especially if you can get a two-goal lead and get the Caps to have to play a style of hockey they don't really want to. They have a very good chance of winning. But let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.